Happy Friday. TJIF, this is First Take. Thanks for being with us. Alongside Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith, they're both in the house promptly. I'm Molly Karam. A sight for sore eyes. What up? Bristol, what up? Connecticut. What up? What up? How what are up? you? Bristol's finest well, in the house. I didn't take any chances with the traffic. Yeah. I stayed here overnight. Yep. Yeah, way to go. You I stayed here yourself? overnight. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I, 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 I chilled. I had, I had a decent time. Good. Good. I'm all right. Got some yeah. sleep, hopefully. Oh, I got sleep. We got sleep. a lot to get into. Yeah. By the way, before we get into yep. that, I, I want to congratulate Molly on picking Peyton last night. That was oh, impressive. Oh, thank you. I know who to side with moving forward. <laughs> One and oh. Oh my goodness. One for the good guys. Congratulations, That's us. Wait, team, Molly. team Skip over yeah. here. Right? So what are we doing here? Skip we gonna, and we... Skip Jr. You know, Molly, Molly, Kid Molly, Bayless Molly, and Kid Karen. Molly could get Molly could get in on the pick. She could do that. She could do that. She's qualified. Yeah. Bring it. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Even though I don't know about the object. Yeah, don't be scared. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be I'm scared. <laughs> all right, next Let's question. Let's go. Coming up, we're diving into all the Week 2 NFL matchups. We'll break them down. The guys are going to pick winners. That is in just a bit. But first, Thursday night football. Peyton Manning looking good at Arrowhead last night, throwing for 256 and three TDs. It's the first time in his career that he's won a game in regulation after trailing by seven or more points with under a minute left in the fourth. Jamal Charles' second fumble of the game with just 27 seconds was returned by Denver corner Bradley Roby. For a touchdown, costing the Chiefs the game and completing a ridiculous comeback in the Broncos' 31-24 victory over Kansas City. Peyton looking like himself. Jamal Charles with those costly errors. Skip, did the Broncos win this or did the Chiefs lose it? Stephen A. Smith, Peyton Manning won it. Period. End of story. And talk about a sight for sore eyes. I loved what I saw late in that game last night at Arrowhead. Because after all we'd heard and all we'd talked about all week on this show about how new coach Gary Kubiak, with the blessing, I'm assuming, of his GM, John Elway, had basically put Peyton Manning in assisted living at age 39, oh. had basically told Peyton, no, you're too old to drive now. I need to be driving for you. I can drive you. I can drive you from goal line to goal line. But you have to listen to me, and I'm going to be in charge of the offense now poor little Peyton Manning in oh, assisted God. living. That's how it came across. And then that happened. And that happened because that team fell behind 14 to nothing. And all of a sudden, Gary Kubiak's like, I guess I got to hand the keys back to Peyton and hope he can pull it out. And did he ever. That, that last drive, that was a thing of all-time great beauty. To go 10 plays, 80 yards, Last 19 to our guy Emmanuel Sanders for a big touchdown to tie it 24. Then we know about the faux pas thanks to Jamal Charles at the end of the game that did happen to win it, although I thought Peyton could have won it in overtime. And Stephen A., after all the talk about how Gary Kubiak, we talked and talked about this, it's going to bring the, the, the new Broncos a new, bigger, badder running game. They had a whopping total of 61 yards last night on 22 tries for a whopping 2.8 yards per try. And despite being propped up by that running game, Peyton Manning still pulled that off at Arrowhead, where, by the way, career now, Peyton Manning at Arrowhead is 7-1 with 23 touchdown passes to six interceptions against his arch rival in one of the loudest outdoor stadiums in the world. And... I'm going to say this again because I said it yesterday and I said it the day before. Going forward, I will still bet on Peyton Manning's resume, even at age 39. He looked 29 last night. But I'll bet on his resume over Gary Kubiak's resume. All this talk is just silliness to me because however far the Denver Broncos are going to get this year, now 2-0, Peyton Manning will take them. I thought he did have a lot of help from a defense that I have raved about on this show because I think it's being a little underrated as people are saying Peyton is now overrated. But with some help from his defense, Peyton Manning won that football game. No surprise, we disagree. I'd give Peyton Manning credit, 26 of 45, 256 yards, three touchdowns, 
just one interception. That one interception was a pick six, by the way. We'll throw that out there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a Peyton Manning that has thrown for over 4,000 yards the last three seasons, that the season before last passed for over 5,400 yards, threw 55 touchdowns. Last year, he threw 37 touchdowns. The last three years in Denver, he's had the number two or the number one ranked offense in the NFL. Okay. At this particular moment, they're ranked 16th. So when you sit there and you 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 want to you mean in this season they're ranked yes. 16 so far? Well, they played the Baltimore Ravens. I, I understand all of that. Well, there's Peyton Manning, yeah, okay. and Peyton Manning has played played a lot of elite teams over the last three years. It hasn't stopped him from doing his thing. Usually, the problem has been with Denver's defense, which, by the way, is not a problem anymore. That defense for Denver is big time. It is legit. It is. They are no joke, and Von Miller is a big time brother right there. This this boy can play, okay? And he goes out and get after the quarterback. Even DeMarcus Ware. Uh, I thought DeMarcus well, showed me some DeMarcus flashes. DeMarcus Ware showed up. Yeah. Showed up. Dallas, you know, he ain't finished. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Having said all of that, the reason why I would still say to you that as great as Peyton Manning was when it counted, and we certainly should take nothing away from him, Kansas City Chiefs turned the ball over three times. I mean, they had three fumbles for crying out yeah, loud. Four I mean, times, five, five times. Yeah, but because you had Alex yeah. Smith throwing right. a couple of interceptions, you had the three fumbles on a part of Kansas City, mm -hmm. two by Jamal Charles, who I thought played lights out. I really actually felt sorry for him because the brother was running the, bo the football well, he, he very, can. very well. It's just unfortunate that he ultimately, you know, lost, you know, lost the ball. They they said he was carrying it yep. loosely. Roby pointed that out that they saw yep. him carrying the ball loosely all night long. Yep. So they knew that they had an op they would have an opportunity to get their hands on a football or punch the football out of his possession. And that's exactly what they did. Uh, but I'm going to sit there and say Kansas City lost it not just because of the turnovers, but yet again, what did they do? With their receiving corps. And see, and see, that's what re this really comes down to me. Jeremy Mack, the four receptions. Kelsey, four receptions. O'Shaughnessy, two receptions. Thomas, two receptions. I'm just looking at them right now. Once again, no receiver caught a touchdown pass, even in this case, tight ends or anybody else. Didn't catch a touchdown pass. You had Jamal Charlie, you had Nile Davis. They ran for touchdowns. But in the end, there's something missing from this Kansas City offense. I thought that their defense played well obviously kept them in the game, gave them leads. Two scores by Denver were provided by, you know, Kansas City mm -hmm. turning the football over. So yeah. I say that to say that had a lot more to do with them losing last night's game than Peyton Manning's greatness. Not to take anything mm -hmm. away from him, because when it counted, when money time arrived, he drove them right down the field, got the job done the way a Peyton Manning caliber player is expected to deliver the goods. So nobody's taking anything away from Peyton Manning. The problem is, had Kansas City simply not turned the ball over, they would have won this football game. They didn't beat them. They, they beat themselves more so than the Denver Broncos beat them on this particular night. We know Denver's the better team as far as I'm concerned because they got Peyton Manning on offense and they have that defense, whereas Kansas City has their defense and they've got Alex Smith on offense. I just don't see it. Again, once again, He's not bad. The guy has a winning record. I think his record right now as a starter is 40-18 and 2. Okay, or 40-18 and 1 rather. But I just look at him and I see a guy that when it's time to make a difference to really elevate yourself to another level. Is Alex Smith going to do that? The answer is no. no. What he's going to do is he's going to manage the game. He's going to be consistent and methodical and relatively productive. He won't beat himself. He won't lose a game for you. You know, even though he gave up pick six, but what he will do is he will sit up there and essentially be neutralized in the event that you need him to step up and get it done for you. Jamal Charles was who you were going to have to rely upon to get that job done. I wish Andy Reid hadn't called a pass play before the half, which enabled Denver to tie it up with the pick six. So then obviously recognizing he made that mistake at the end of the first half, he turned around near the end of the game and said, let's be relatively conservative and conventional here and give the ball to Jamal Charles and just go into overtime. And sure enough, he got the ball. Well, a lot of people were ripping Andy Reid for just doing that without kneeling on just like letting the clock run out. Well, yeah. Hey, Jamal Charles is as dangerous a breakaway back as there is in all I, of pro football. I agree with so, you. So I'm okay with handing him I, I can't knock, and I can knock Andy Reid yep. for that. What I can knock Andy Reid for is letting Alex Smith throw that pass. If you're going to throw a pass in that situation near the end of the first half, throw it downfield so even if it gets intercepted, the likelihood of it being returned for a pick six is null and void. 
he put himself in a position for Alex Smith to get caught out there like that. A seven points that it cost the, 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 the Kansas okay. City Chiefs, and I think they had a lot to do with them right. losing this game. Point of order. The reason I'm going to give Denver's defense more credit than I'm going to blame Kansas City for those five turnovers, I thought four of the five were forced errors by the defense where they made a play to dislodge the football as opposed to just a poor pass or a, a careless fumble or, or whatever. Somebody well, just lost the ball. I thought Denver was attacking the football. I definitely think they were attacking the football, but I think that the reason why they were doing so is because, as Roby pointed out, he saw Jamal Charles carrying the football loosely all night long. In that case of the interception by Alex Smith, that is not a pass play you call in that situation okay. in my estimation. Right. I think Denver was waiting for it, so I think those were two giveaways. Okay, here's my other issue with your critique. You cannot blame a team for losing that you don't think was good enough to win in the first place because you're also telling me you're not sold on Kansas City. Yeah, but I picked them to win last night's game. Okay. So that does not apply to me. Okay. I picked them to win last night's game. Okay, I did not. All right, then. And I said yesterday in the first hour of the show, you, you were a little belated to come to the show yesterday, but oh. in the first hour, I said that, once again, I'm not sold on these Chiefs as a big-time Super Bowl contending type football team. And it starts with that quarterback. I'm sure he's a nice guy. This is nothing personal against him. They were 0 for 7 on third down at home against your arch rival. You're going to have a hard time winning the football game when you're 0 for 7, especially when you turn it over five times. But it all comes back to an Alex Smith, and you just said it. He's okay. Some some days he's pretty good, and some days he's not good enough. I've always felt that way about enough. Alex Smith, which is why so, I said, even though Joe Montana told me that there's no way on earth he would have let Alex Smith go, he would have kept him in San Francisco, yeah. even ahead of Colin Kaepernick. I certainly maybe disagree. if you surrounded him with an even better football team with better skill people, maybe, so. maybe better receivers. Maybe. I don't know, maybe but so. but I I still don't think so. I think the Chiefs are who I thought they were and they're not as good as the Broncos, so I'm not going to blame them for not being as good as the Broncos in the end. Well, the other thing that I would point out about the Denver Broncos that none of us need mm -hmm. to forget, Molly, Skip, C.J. Anderson and Ronnie Hillman, you need to have a better running game than well, what they gave you last night. Well, 61 obviously. yards rushing. Well, I'm just saying that's yeah. a big, big deal because we can sit there and talk all we want, but the less effectively they run the football, the more it puts pressure on Peyton Manning. And in this particular, at this particular juncture of his career, regardless of how much everybody's raving about the resurrection of Peyton Manning because folks thought that he was dead. I certainly didn't think so, but there's something to worry about in terms of age, attrition, father time, mm -hmm. etc. Peyton Manning went down a couple of times, but he wasn't even touched. He just sort of rushed, and it was like, Psh! he okay, just went down. That's just smart. I'm, I'm not, that's not, how you play till you're 39, you're, you're, right? You're not, you're you, not hearing my You give up to fight you're another not, you're, day, you're not right? hearing my point. But I was okay. drinking the Kool-Aid with the running game, too. That zone yes. blocking scheme, we talked we about talk, it back you, in California. That was and, your first show. And, you yes, brought it up. And, and they haven't run effectively at exactly. all. I thought that's what was going to happen. Absolutely right. And what I'm saying to you, Skip, is this. All I'm trying to point out, I'm not saying that Peyton Manning was not smart. I'm saying that if your running game doesn't give you any level of production, you're going to see a lot more of that because you've got to get something from these guys. C.J. Anderson is too talented. You, I mean, this guy I mean, came you, out like a game last, last year on a Sunday night at Arrowhead. Yes. He ran these people out of That's their right. own building. That's right. Okay, and last night he goes 27 yeah, yards on 12, 12 carries. 27 on, on 12, 12 carries. Wow. Now, really? Yeah, you've got to, okay, you've got but to get more. Doesn't that, that even increase? your respect for what Peyton pulled off last Sure it time? does. Sure Thank it does. You. But I've never lost respect for Peyton Manning. You have to remember, the issue that we had with Peyton Manning was what was going on with him and Gary Kubiak. We did see some level of regression from the time that he got beat up by St. Louis last year, and then he incurred the, San, the hamstring injury I think that's San when Diego. it started. Yeah, but yeah. then a hamstring injury mm -hmm. against San Diego. The issue with Peyton Manning was his health. It was not his game. But then when you combine questions about his health and age and father time with potential differences that may have been in existence with him and Gary Kubiak, mm -hmm. now you've got a problem. So then now you're coupling all of that with the absence mm -hmm. of a productive running game. That's where you have your problem. Because no matter what we see from Peyton Manning, I mean, look, I'm telling you right now, he's smart to go down. You're absolutely right. Because when he does get hit, it looks like it hurts him. It really, really does. <laughs> well, going to knock sure it. it. I'm just saying nobody going to knock him for that. Yeah. Again, for all the time, A, some yeah. of, we've been watching him get hit for years. I'm just seeing it have an effect on him more so now than it did in the past. There's no shame in that. Mm -hmm. I'm just simply 
elevating the level of importance of a running game for him. Okay. Because regardless of how gifted he is, he can't sit back. He doesn't appear to be somebody that can sit back anymore and take the punishment that he once was capable of, pay of taking. Okay. That's something we got to watch out for. Coming up, I also want to hear where you guys think they'll end up if they'll go all the way to the playoffs, and we'll discuss the tension between potentially the quarterback. Well, we'd like to hear what Garrett you got to say about that too, Molly. Mm -hmm. We will. You're we're going to we're going to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to discuss that later on. Well, I'm saying. Last